today, Lord God, of praise, oh God, because you are truly worthy of it, Lord God. God, allow our hearts and our affections to be towards you, Lord God. Let us look to the hills, God, where our help comes, Lord God. From you, Lord God, the creator of heaven and earth, Lord God, you are worthy of so much, Lord God. God, if we had 10,000 tongues, it still wouldn't be enough to thank you, Lord God, because you are great and greatly to be praised, oh God. God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would permeate throughout this building, Lord God, that there would be a resounding place sound of worship, Lord God. God, that it would be a sweet aroma to your nostrils this morning, oh God. Pray, Lord God, that you would speak through your servant today, Lord God. Let the words of his mouth and the meditation of his heart, God, be ye acceptable in your sight, Lord God. God, you are a great God, and you are worthy to be praised, God. You are holy, oh God. You are mighty, God. You are a strong God. Hallelujah. God, we thank you, Lord God. We love you, Lord. God, thank you for the best gift we can have, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You guys can stand up on your feet today and worship with us as we celebrate today, Christmas morning.
anybody glad for Emmanuel today? God with us. Ah, hallelujah. Hey, hey, uh, that's, what I, that's what I was hoping to see. Some people that will lift their hands and get up on their feet and, and celebrate the name of Jesus. This is his day. Amen. Amen. This is his day. And uh, yeah, it's not the actual day he was born, but we reverence his coming here. Amen. It's not a necessarily a birthday celebration, but thank you for being born. Thank you for leaving heaven and coming to earth. Thank you for choosing us. Uh, they thank you for doing it because you loved us so. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was hoping, I was hoping that today would be so much, so, so much of a celebration. Amen. I'm, I'm grateful. I'm so grateful to see so many faces in the house. So thankful for you choosing to start your Christmas morning by giving him glory. Amen. By coming to his house before attending to yours. Ah, hallelujah. That's a blessing. And I promise you that God is going to be grateful and show his appreciation toward you for it. I promise you he will. Because anything, as I said last week, that you give to God first, he stretches, he sustains. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Merry Christmas, Mount Hebron. Merry, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I'm so, so, so glad to be in the house of God this morning. It just feels right. <laughs> it just feels right. It feels right. I... So I've been a member of, been a member of, yeah, glory, glory. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. That's all right. Let me tell you that that's the appropriate response. That's the appropriate response. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the appropriate response. I, mean, I was going to encourage y'all on Wednesday. We didn't have, we didn't have power hour, and and I was disobedient. I, I'll admit because I was I was intending to get on the live. Sorry, Sister Jessica, because we talked about it. I was intended to get on the live stream to encourage you, but um, piggybacking off the off of our our, our illustrious Doctor Yvonne's message. You know, there's a lot of people, even more so this season, that are saying how they feel out of the Christmas spirit, out of a, outside of a, a festive mood. Um, and, and, I, and, I, and I understand, but I only understand to some degree. Let me explain. I, I, I know. I know that there are different reasons why people feel this way. And I, and I understand that, you know, loved ones have been lost. You, you know, you, 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 you're, you're having to celebrate Christmas without that person or, um, you know, what, what, whatever the situation may be. But when it comes to being out of the Christmas spirit, I have to look back, Dr. Yvonne, at the shepherds. As you explained to us. Last Sunday, shepherds were considered the lowliest of the low. <laughs> they, 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 were, they were outcasted to the fields to tend to sheep. Even as Dr. Yvonne said, some people believe that that was a punishment due to sin. Even if you look at the text that she preached from, the angel came to visit them at nighttime. They were sitting in the field alone with sheep at night, outcasted, completely pushed aside from the city. You talking about somebody that shouldn't have been in a Christmas mood <laughs> or a festive spirit. You can take a look at these shepherds who were definitely individuals that you would have expected to respond in a way to this angel like yeah but I you know that's cool and all but right now I'm just not feeling that you see we've got certain individuals have different reasons for being out of the Christmas spirit like my money is low uh, you know the commercial side of Christmas uh, that, that, that's that's taking you out of the spirit but but at the news of Jesus, <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm here to challenge anybody who may feel 
I, you know, who, who, who may feel, and, 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 I'm, and I'm not being, and I, hear me, hear my heart. I'm, I'm, not, not, I'm not not being empathetic toward you. I'm not. But if your focus is right, your spirit is right. You like, let me say that again. If your focus is right, then your spirit is right. These shepherds, if you continue on in the text, Dr. Yvonne, it says that when they return back, they return back with worship and rejoicing. Yeah, yeah, these same outcasting shepherds that, that probably should have felt as if I don't really want to hear no good news because I'm living in the bad. Oh, but, but at the news of Jesus Christ, I, do I got a witness in this place? If your mind is set on him and off of the other things, That ain't my sermon this evening, this morning, but I, I just, I just, I wanted to help somebody. Fix your focus. This is, this is about, about him. <laughs> I don't care if you got a skeleton tree at home with nothing underneath. I, I don't, I don't, I don't care if you ain't got no, no friends to worship and, I mean, to celebrate Christmas with. Don't matter. You've got a friend in I know, I know that loved one. I get it. But you've got a loved one in, in <laughs> oh God, if you could just, if you could just take a moment and fix your, fix your focus. Fix your focus. I'm helping somebody already this morning, this Christmas morning. As you go forth with your Christmas, stop telling people you out of the Christmas spirit. Fix your focus. Fix your focus. T to, 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 tell, to tell Christ that you're out of the spirit would be to slap him in the face. Because he came and, and he lived and he died and he did it just for... While you were yet sinners, <laughs> chose to, to leave his high and lofty position to songwriter say it just for me I know we usually sing it at Easter but it, it counts here too just for me Jesus came and did it he came and he did it just for somebody just tap your chest say just for me yeah yep 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 glory to God listen I, again I didn't I didn't mean to go off tangent there but I just wanted to encourage you fix your mind fix your focus fix your it's not that bad I'm serious it's not that bad. It can always, always be worse. You want to be appreciative about your situation? Look at somebody else's. You think you think it's bad. You think you have a right to be outside of the quote unquote Christmas spirit. Nah, nah, take a real good look. Take a real good look. Look around you right now. You, you in a great place. <laughs> you in a sweet spot. It ain't that bad. It ain't that bad. Glory to God. Amen. Don't be mad at me, y'all. I promise you, I, I understand. I do. I, I, I do. I understand to a degree. Uh, to a degree. But anytime I put my eyes on God, anytime I set my affections on him in any situation over my 41 years of life, it's always realigned me. Right? Because I ain't, ain't, ain't nothing bigger than him. Nothing greater than him. Nothing too big for him. Mm. All right, all right, all right. Amen, amen. Two quick orders of business, and I'm gonna, I promise you, I'm getting in this word. 11:30, y'all hold me to it. We out, no later than. And if y'all stay later than that, that's on y'all. Y'all want to talk and have hot chocolate and you know all of that. That's that's on you. I'm gonna be saying amen. Consider yourselves dismissed by 11:30. All right. Anybody want to bet? No, I'm just playing. I'm... <laughs> Two orders of business. Number one. Number one, next Sunday, okay, is our New Year's service. New Year's service, we will be doing absolutely nothing for New Year's Eve. I want you guys to enjoy your families, pray it in at home, stay safe, amen, out of the gunfire and everything else that's going on out there. But just, 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 you know, pray, pray it in at midnight, amen, um, um, with your families and your loved ones. So, so, and then we'll be back here Sunday morning for our regular service, amen, 11 o'clock a.m., uh, service we're going to have next Sunday. Amen? Everybody, everybody got it? Okay, cool, cool. Um, second order of business is our hot spot. Amen? Um, 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 I've been watching 
this individual all week, press into his presence, um, having a great time doing so, and and even even showing showing me and and causing me to be convicted by putting everything else aside and getting into his presence. Um, was doing it even while I should have been right with him, <laughs> but I wasn't. Um, but none other than your beautiful first lady, Shamika Brantley, is going to come forth and give us a word from the hot spot this morning. trying to figure out what I should say and then late in the morning God just put this on my heart so um, 2 Samuel chapter 7 God's promise to uh, David so in this chapter you know it started off talking about um, you know the Lord had given David well he given him rest from all his enemies you know it's been a lot of battles and wars and everything going on. And, and David focused was somewhere else. He was trying to figure out how to uh, build the Lord a, a palace or a temple. But um, the Lord never instructed him to do so. So I just wanted to read this real quick. Um, Go and tell my servant David, this is what the Lord says. Are you the one to build me a house to dwell in? I have not dwelt in the house from the day I brought the Israelites out of Egypt to this day. I have been moving from place to place with the tent as my dwelling. Wherever I have moved with all the Israelites, did I ever say to any of the rulers whom I commanded to shepherd my people, why have, you, why have you not built me a house of cedar? Then tell my servant David, this is what the Lord says, Almighty. I took you from the pastures and from the following flock to be ruler over my people, I have been with you wherever you have gone. I have cut off your enemies from before you. Now I will make your name great, like the names of the greatest men on earth. And I will provide a place for my people, Israel, and I will plant them so that they can have a home of their own and no longer be disturbed. I forgot. Anywho, um, <laughs> what I'm saying today is... Um, the Lord had given him rest from all his enemies. David was a mighty warrior. Uh, David's job was to subdue the enemies of Israel to establish the kingdom of God, not God's house. God never instructed him to build um, Israel to build him a temple. So what I'm saying here is God gives each of us, he called each of us with a specific purpose. Um, and the way you can find that is to get in God's presence, as I've been saying forever. Um, get into God's word. Find out what God has called you to do specifically so you won't exert energy doing something he has not called you to do. That's it, y'all. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Don't waste time. Don't waste time. Amen. Doing stuff that seems right but is all the way wrong. <laughs> Yeah, you want to be doing what God told you to do, not what you think he wants you to do. You got to be careful. You got to be careful because the enemy will run with that. Hey, amen. He'll have you doing things that you, that seems all the way right, totally permissible. This must be God. And it's keeping you way off, right, way off task. Amen. God wants you here and you all the way over here. Be mindful. Be in his presence so that you can be obedient to that which he says. Amen. Amen. Again, I'm not going to be before you long today. I don't even, I didn't even put a notebook up here. I'm going to preach without notes today. Um, I, I just, I want to go straight from the text. I'll read the text in a minute, but, but once again, Merry Christmas, Mount Hebron. We know that today is, 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 is a, a, 
a monumental day in the year. Amen. It is, it is Christmas morning. Uh, we, all of the hustle and bustle, all of the, the running and ripping to the stores and the wrapping of gifts and everything else, um, all for us to um, attempt to touch the childlike heart. Amen. This is, this, is, uh, this is also the day where children all around the world wake up earlier than they've ever woke up in their entire life. Amen. Uh, they wake up as early as they possibly can with no fight, without calling their name, without an alarm clock, without shaking them or anything. They wake up all over the world as, at the earliest and the most energetic that they've ever waken up in their life. Amen. And, and they and they jump up out of their beds and and they and they and they run first and foremost to to the parents' room, right? You gotta you gotta wake your parents up. Anybody ever been a kid before? Y'all know what I'm talking about. You gotta wake your parents up. Doesn't matter that it's 5:45 a.m. and you attempted to stay up all night so that you didn't even have to go to sleep, so that you could just be up when the sun rose because you thought when the sun rose that was early enough or right enough to go wake everybody in the house up. I know I'm talking to somebody, and so and so and so you run and you wake your parents up, and then they they you 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 run downstairs or over to the next room or however your house is set up, and 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 what children get into is what I like to call and what my subject matter is today. Children get into what I call the recipient's position. <laughs> children run. And they get into what I like to call and what our title is today, the recipient's position. Uh, if y'all don't know what that is, what that position is, is they run and they find themselves kneeled at a... <laughs> they find themselves kneeled down at the tree in anticipation of opening up gifts that they feel are for them. Matter of factly, most kids, if you were anything like me as a kid, you've been looking and eyeballing these presents all month long, trying to find out, oh, that one got my name on it right there. Yeah. That's the biggest one, I'm gonna open that one first. I'm gonna get that one first. And so, and so they don't just come into a recipient's position without expectation yeah y'all better catch me <laughs> but they, they 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 come and they kneel in this recipient's position with a full expectation you've already got your mind made up that i've got uh, a, a playstation under there there's got to be some jordans under there if you like me there's got to be some jordans under there uh, hopefully there's some money under there maybe there's a a, 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 a easy bake oven i'm trying to i'm trying to come down your avenue i don't know how old y'all are in the room uh, <laughs> maybe there's a hot wheels race set whatever whatever it was that tickled your fancy as a kid you you already had an expectation that once you took the cover off <laughs> there was going to be something that you desired so much well well saints of god i I need you to understand that the recipient's position is not just in the natural. <laughs> uh, but there's, there's positions. <laughs> uh, there's a recipient position that we need to find ourselves in in the spiritual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, it's, and, 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 it, and it takes a lot more than just kneeling at the tree. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, you've got to make your mind up when it comes to the spiritual to be in the right position. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's bigger than a physical location. You see, I, I, that's the issue with Christianity today. We run to the building thinking that we're in the recipient's position. But being in the building ain't enough. Uh, we, 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 we run to our spiritual mentor, right, and, and, and sit at the dinner table with expectation of being able to open what belongs to you, but I'm here to tell you that your mentor, spiritual mentor's table, that ain't that that that's that's not enough. There's something that has to happen in the mind and in the heart. There's a posture that you have to take on in the mind and in the heart in order for you to be a recipient of the gift. Y'all, <laughs> y'all, y'all still with me? I want to show y'all. I want to just show y'all. Go ahead, open your Bibles to the book of Luke. We're going to carry on, Dr. Yvonne, from, your, from right after your story. Luke chapter 2. 
You don't have to stand. You can be seated because I'm just going I'm to I'm skim through this text and then we're going to go home. Luke chapter 2. And we're going to start at, we're going to start with verse 25, but again, again, be seated, be seated, be seated. We're going to skim through. Backdrop, backdrop, Luke chapter 2, verse 25, just a backdrop. So now Jesus has been born. The shepherds have been approached by the angel. Shepherds have gone into the city. They've, they've told everybody what the angel had to say. Uh, the people are now uh, whispering and, and, and wondering and looking and trying to find and things are, are happening in the city now uh, because, because news is out that the Messiah has come. Keep in mind that they have a different perception of the Messiah. Amen. They're, they're expecting this regal royal king to come walking through. And, and they, 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 they've got a whole nother picture. They, no way did they think that this was going to be a baby born in a manger. <laughs> so so, 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 so they're, they're looking, but looking blind. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That's a whole nother sermon that I don't have time for. But, but, but here in the text, it's time for, 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 for them to present Jesus back to God. Amen. It was, it, was, it, was, it was tradition and law in those times that if you were born a child and that child was a boy that you first had to have him circumcised and then you had to take him back to the temple and dedication unto God. Same way we have our baby Teddy dedications today, amen. Uh, the only difference then is it was, it was for a boy child, male child. Now we do it for all children, amen. But 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 here, this 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 male child had to be presented back to God as according to the law of Moses. Now, when you went to the temple, you also were supposed to take a sacrifice. If y'all remember me talking about sacrifices not too long ago, you had to take a sacrifice, and it all depended on your lifestyle as to what you would present. Now, if you take a look back in Leviticus chapter 12, it'll tell you that what you were supposed to offer God was a lamb. But if you didn't have it, if, you, if, you know, if your bank account didn't speak well of you at that time, you could also bring two turtle doves or pigeons. <laughs> uh, uh, Mary and Joseph, if you take a look, uh, um, they had a pair of pigeons. Uh, showing you... That Jesus was born into a lowly state. So important. So important that, you know, it's, it's something that we say a lot and we kind of just run over. But it's very important to understand that, 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 that Christ didn't come from luxury. Mm -hmm. He was born on the low end of life. But was very much the high end of life. <laughs> yeah, Y'all still with me. So just, just as a backdrop, they, they, so, so here they are, they're, 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 they're at the temple, they're in Jerusalem, and take a look at verse 25, and behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon, and the same man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel. He's waiting for the Messiah to come. And look at this one, and the Holy Ghost... <laughs> was upon him that's so so important right there we're going to talk about him being just and devout but what's real important is that the holy ghost was upon him uh i, I don't know if you've been keeping up with this this these last few weeks messages but jesus has just come jesus has not yet ascended jesus has not yet died he hasn't resurrected. We know that we received the Holy Ghost after <laughs> all of that took place. But here it is. He's an infant. He's just born. But Simeon was filled. Or, or, or let, me, let, me, let me make it right. The Holy Ghost was upon him. The recipient's position. Look at Simeon. He, he's, he's just and he's devout, he's righteous, and he's loyal, and he has the Holy Ghost. Hmm. Y'all got me? Verse 26, and it was revealed unto him by who? 
<laughs> it was revealed unto him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the gift. Oh, oh we. It was told by him by the Holy Spirit that he was not going to die until he got the gift. Oh, we. That's so big right there. Uh, and, 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 and he came by the who? Oh, come on, man. All right, all right. So, 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 so. So he's just, he's devout. He's got the Holy Ghost on him. The Holy Ghost is also giving him messages that he's listening to. I, I, I don't, listen, it's not enough to have the Holy Ghost on you. It's, it's, it, it, you have to have the Holy Ghost in your ear. You also have to be obedient. That's my first point. I know, I know that the text says that he was just and devout and had the Holy Ghost on him, but we all got that. Guess what? Everybody in this room is righteous. Ask God. He'll tell you. Everybody in this room is righteous. You got the blood of Jesus Christ on you. You're considered righteous by who matters. God. God says that you're righteous. Guess what else you got? You got the Holy Spirit. Everybody in this room got the Holy Spirit. How many believers I got in the room? How many of y'all say, yes, Lord? Lift your hand again. Holy Spirit. Yes, yes. You all have the Holy Spirit. So, you, so you're righteous. You've got the Holy Spirit. And that still ain't enough. Because if you're not listening and obeying the Holy Spirit. <laughs> if you're quenching and ignoring the Holy Spirit. Mm, if I got some people that's transparent in the room. If you're, if you're consistently quenching and, and, and ignoring the Holy Spirit. It ain't enough to have it. You got to be obedient and submitted to it. Amen. Y'all hear me? Simeon. Simeon is told these things. He's, he's on search for the Messiah. I'm waiting, anticipating the consolation of Israel. I can't wait to see him. I, I can't, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking all over the world. Here, here's, here's the Holy Ghost. Don't worry. You won't die before you see him. <laughs> you won't die before you see Can I encourage somebody in the room? There's some stuff that the Holy Spirit is telling you that you won't die until you see it. I'm, 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 I'm trying to help you this morning. Merry Christmas. There's some stuff in your life that the Holy Spirit is telling you. It's up to you whether you heard him or not, but it's up to, uh, it's up to you to accept him or not. But there's some stuff that the Holy Spirit told you that you won't not, you will not die until you see it. Hmm. Mm, be encouraged this Christmas morning. Verse 27, and he came by the Spirit. Now, I just told you that the shepherds then came and they then gave report and they then gave news. The people are looking now. It's murmurings all over the place. I, I, heard, I heard he's here. I heard he's here. And you got you to gotta imagine how it is today with rumors that the rumors about Jesus had to be crazy. Right? Here's the shepherds saying that there's going to be this baby that... that that was born today. He's, he's here, the, the, the consolation of, his, of Israel. He's born. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's born. Listen, let me, let me tell you what I heard, man. I heard he's got a Bentley. He's driving down Euclid Avenue with a velour v Versace suit on. It's, it's, it's crazy. He got two pinky rings on one finger. You know what I'm saying? You, you, <laughs> they, they, they making all types of crazy stories up about Christ, right? Here he is, this baby that's, that's now at the temple. But, but, but verse 27, and Simeon was, he came by the, the spirit, not the rumors, not the people whispering, not even curiosity, but the spirit led him to the temple. The spirit led him to God's house to see God. <laughs> the spirit, the spirit led him. He was, here's the obedience that I'm talking about. Listen, God, uh, the Holy Spirit is leading us places that we oftentimes ignore. Mm -hmm. we, 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 we heard it and we know we heard it, but we've yet to move. Anybody real in the room? Okay, okay. The spirit said it. He told you, you know, you should have been there already. And I'm not necessarily talking about a physical location. There's some stuff that God then told you to do. There's some people that he told you to talk to. There's some places that he told you to go. And you're, you're, you're ignoring him or just totally being disobedient. Mm. But yet Simeon, he moved. 
spirit, he came by the spirit into the temple. And when the parents brought the child Jesus to do what was custom by law, Simeon was in the right place at the right time. He was in a recipient's position. Just, devout, Holy Ghost filled, obedient. Obedient. I had to pull out the one that's not written in the text. You see, because we'll look at Simeon's description and we'll say, okay, yeah, yeah, just devout, I'm right, yeah, I got that, I got it. Mm -mm. Obedient. Obedient. Because the Holy Spirit could have told Simeon to get to the temple and he could have said, I got to go to work. <laughs> Holy, Holy Spirit could have said, Simeon, get to the temple now. I still got some last minute Christmas shopping I need to do. I just just right, right after I leave Walmart, I'm going I'm to right after I go to Beachwood Mall, and then I promise I'll go to the temple. But if, if Simeon had said that, if he wouldn't have been at the temple right when the Holy Spirit led him there, I'm trying to help you here. If, 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 you, if you don't drop everything when the Holy Spirit says, <laughs> I, I'm talking about drop everything it's got to be hot in your hands I, okay okay i heard you go i heard you holy spirit that's how we should be responding to him in everything there are some places that you need to be and i'm talking about based off of the holy spirit's direction not yours stop making where you need to be where you need to be <laughs> Ah, uh, y'all can catch it when y'all get home. Stop making where you need to be, be where you need to be. Let where the Holy Spirit needs you to be. Y'all all right? Simeon was, was in a recipient's position. When he took the baby up in his arms, verse 28, and blessed God, the 29, Lord, now let us thy servant die or depart in peace according to thy word. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation. He's holding what he's been looking for. Yeah. I, 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 that's, that's a whole other sermon too. But here he is. He's in not only in the presence of, but actually holding that which he's been seeking. He's holding salvation. He's, he's holding consolation. He's holding propitiation. He's holding He's got his hands on the Savior. Oh, Jesus. Can you imagine Simeon's feeling? Because he was filled with the Holy Spirit, he knew what he was holding. Uh, see, sometimes we handle Jesus minus the Holy Spirit and don't even realize what we got in our hand. I'm helping somebody in the room. We don't even realize what we got. Mm -hmm. You've been quenching the Holy Spirit all, all week, all month long, and then you get into his presence and don't know how to behave. Don't know what to do. Hands all over the presence. And you don't, you, I just, I just, I don't. Uh. But here Simeon is holding the salvation. You can imagine the tears streaming down his eyes as he's looking into this baby's eyes and just, uh, let me die in peace, Lord. And just like you said, I, I, I saw what I needed to see. I, I, I saw what you told me I was going to see. Now I can, I can depart you know, just, just a pin drop real quick. You know, I, when, when, I, when I talk to elders about death, I, I kind of, I, I, <laughs> it flabbergasts. I'm, I'm flabbergasted, you know, because to, to, to talk to elders about death, it's like, send me home. I'm ready. Am I lying? I'm, I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready to go, you know. I've, I've, I've run my race, and I'm, I'm good. I'm, I've I'd be like, no, no, not yet, no. But they've got this walk. <laughs> they've got this time with God. I'm talking about Christian elders. They've got this time that they've spent with God. And, 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 and when you've walked that walk and you've walked it fervently, when you've, when you've walked that walk and you've walked it devoutly, when you've walked that walk with obedience, when you've been as an elder all your life in the recipient's position, it's easy for you to say, I can depart now in peace. I know what's for me. I know what's on the other side. Mm. Y'all still with me? 
mine eyes have seen thy salvation. 31, which thou hast prepared before the face of all the people, a light to lighten the Gentiles and the glory of thy people Israel. And Joseph and his mother, they marvel. Joseph and Mary are looking at him, looking at the baby like, what, my, my, my son? Even, even though the angel had already said these things unto Mary, what this was for Mary and Joseph was confirmation. Y'all, 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 y'all know what I'm talking about when God tells you something and then you come to church and you hear just what you needed to hear in the message. And it's like, oh, my God, you marvel at what everything that God, that the God in, of heaven already told you about the baby boy is now being confirmed through this random man named Simeon who was at the right place at the right time because he was in a recipient's position. And now here he's holding your baby, the stranger. Some of us wouldn't even let a. Better not touch my, don't you touch my baby. Don't you take him out of that car seat, don't you? But here this guy just picks up Jesus and he's, he's going to town. Never have met him, never have met the parents, never have ever. I want to point this out. Notice that at the beginning of the text, verse 25, if you look back, it says, and behold, there was a, a man. Simeon was just a, <laughs> he was just a man. However, he was devout, he was just, he was Holy Ghost filled and obedient. When you find yourself in a recipient's position, that's when God can download the gifts. Who am I helping? Who am I helping? Not, 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 not saying that you don't have the gift. I said download it. <laughs> look, look, you have it on you already. He can activate when he finds you in the recipient's position. Simeon was just a man who in the moment became a prophet. <laughs> the Bible didn't say that this was Simeon the prophet in Jerusalem. It says he was just a man in Jerusalem. But when he got the Savior in his hands, he had everything that he needed to say to the Savior. And then if you keep reading, he went on and started to prophesy to Mary. Now look here. Uh, uh, verse 34, and Simeon blessed them, and he said unto Mary, his mother, behold, this child is set for the fall and rising again of many in Israel, and for a sign which shall be spoken against. Yea, look, verse 35, a sword shall pierce through thy own soul also, that the thoughts of many hearts may be revealed. What was he telling Mary? He was telling Mary everything that she needed to hear about the walk and the journey she was going to take being the mother of the Savior. Yeah, the, the sword is going to pierce your own soul too. Yeah, because you're going to have to watch people ridicule him. You're going to have to watch people doubt and deny him. You're going to ultimately watch people hang him on a tree, put nails in his <laughs> huh? spit on him, beat on him, become disfigured. Yeah, you're going to be pierced to the soul by what you're going to have to witness being the mother of this little boy. However, he's going to be the rise for, of, of, <laughs> of many and the fall of many. But this is Simeon, just a man, Rick, from Jerusalem, now filled with prophecy. <laughs> Find yourself in the recipient's position, not just so that you can receive the gift, but so that you can be downloaded into to be a gift. Simeon was a gift for Mary in that moment. She needed to hear everything she needed to hear. This is why they marveled. She needed that confirmation, Rick. She, she, she needed to know what was to come. And Simeon brought it to her, her because he was in the recipient's position. Oh, but it gets better. Because I'm not done. Look at verse 36. And there was one Anna, a prophetess. <laughs> Compare and contrast. Simeon was just a man in Jerusalem. Anna is a labeled prophetess. Mm -hmm. The daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of great age. And had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. Okay, so here's Anna the prophetess. She's old. And she had a husband for a total of seven years before he died. 
She was a virgin when she married him. They were married for seven years, and then he, he died. Okay? Let's keep reading. Verse 37, and she was a widow of about four score and four years. For those of you who don't know what that means, she had been widowed for 84 years. She was married for seven, a widow for 84. Me, you, going back to what I said about the shepherds before I started preaching, you're talking about somebody that probably shouldn't be in the Christmas spirit. Somebody that shouldn't be in a festive mood. Here's Anna the prophetess. Old. No husband. And y'all got to understand what it meant to be a woman widow in those times. You see, it ain't the same as, as today where your husband passed away and you haven't had a husband. And, no, no, no. When you didn't have a husband or any offspring, especially male offspring, as a woman in those times, oh, you were, you were doomed. Like, oh, my God, like, oh, she, she just has, she has absolutely nothing. You got to understand that the man for the woman was everything in the biblical day. Everything. It was, it, she, it was, it was, the, it was her covering. It was her, 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 her laborer. It was her, her, her supplier. It was everything. The man was everything. Not this independent, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, F-R-E-E. No, no, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't like that today, that back then. Right, it wasn't like that back then. That 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 successful independent woman wasn't for real back then. I, you needed a man, and if your man died, you needed a son. And if you didn't have neither, you were destitute. You hear me? And so here you go. You're talking about out of the festive mood. Anna had every right to be storming around the city, upset and hurt because she had nobody. Husband dead for 84 years. I only got to enjoy him for seven. Not even a full decade did I get to enjoy my husband. He's gone. I have no kids. It's just me. And I'm old. And I got nobody to care for me. She could have been walking around Jerusalem just upset. Don't talk to me about no savior. I don't want to hear it. I don't know. Uh, nobody's saving me. I'm, I'm alone. I'm, I'm sad. I'm trying to help you. But instead. <laughs> And she was a widow for about four score and four years, which departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayer night and day. Instead of being disgruntled, instead of being hurt and destitute, instead she made her habitation in the temple. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't have a husband. Mm -hmm. He left me 84 years ago. I don't have any kids. We ain't even have enough time to handle that. But I do have the presence of God. <laughs> and I'm going to, watch this word, devote myself to him. Night and day with fastings and worship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Recipient's position. Anna finds herself devoted. Simeon was obedient. Anna devoted. I know what my story says, but I'm going to be in his presence. <laughs> look, look, look. It was so much so that she had, most theologians believe, quarters in the temple. She stayed at the temple so much that she actually lived there. She had, I don't know if it was a cot or a back room or a washroom or something in the temple that she actually lived there. Saints of God, what's your address? Uh, because each, each and every one of us is associated to something. You see, she was at the temple so much that they let her live there. Where are you at often that they let you live there? Because <laughs> uh, and and, oh, 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 I'm not talking about just a physical location. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, it could be a mental play, place. It, it, it could be that everybody that talks to you talks to you so much about depression that Depression Avenue is where you live. Uh, every, everybody that talks to you, every time we talk, is anxiety. Anxiety Avenue is your address. Uh, if I could be transparent with you, you could have found me in the local bars in Maple, Bedford, Garfield area. I was there so much that that's where you could have mm -hmm, la label me right there. Gateway, Beethoven's, Tonight's Lounge. I'm talking about some spots that y'all probably ain't never heard of. Yeah, yeah, I was right there. 
faithfully. That was my, but, 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 uh, God changed my address. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. God, God can change your address. I'm talking about U-Haul truck right at your residence and say, put everything in. You don't live here anymore. Do I got anybody in the room that knows what it is to Jesus to change your address? When you find yourself in a recipient's position, mm -hmm, he'll pack you up and change everything about your life. Yeah, I don't live there no more. That ain't my house no more. So much so that not too long ago, I went back to the places that I used to go. I'm, I'm just being transparent with you. I went back to the spot that I used to go to. Uh, 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 it used to be called the Maple Tree, but it's I got a whole new name now. And I went. This was years ago, but I went for my sister's anniversary. She had an anniversary party. And when I walked in at a place that used to be, what's happening, what's good, Royce, was, man, what you doing here? You don't come here no more. Thank you, God, that he changed my Change your position, he'll change your address. Same spot. I promise you it was the same people. I walked in the room dapping people up, Tyler. What up, baby? What's popping? What you doing here, man? Seeing you in years. Glory to God. Glory to God. Next person, what's popping, baby? What's good? Ah, man, I ain't seen you in a long time, bro. Glory, glory, glory to God. Glory to God. He changed my address. Glory to God. No longer. No longer bound. No more chains holding me. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. I drifted back. <laughs> oh, Anna, Anna had a temple residence. She was a temple dweller. Yeah, her story could have created more, but she had a different position. She was a, devoted to God. I'll give you all of my hurt. I'll give you all of my loneliness. I'm not lonely because I'm where I need to be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know, I know what culture says, but your cultural status don't equal where I live. Y'all, I, I, I left my house where my husband died and where I was alone, and I've been here. been in your presence. And because she was devoted so much so that she had a temple dwelling, she was in the right place to receive the gift. Because the text goes on to say, and she, and she coming in that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord. Look, look, because she was a temple dweller, she was able to walk up on Simeon while he was holding the Savior. <laughs> Ain't God all right? Simeon is in the right place at the right time because he was obedient. Anna is at the right place at the right time because she was devoted. So while Simeon is giving prophecy to the Savior that now he can depart in peace because of his obedience, she gets to lay eyes on the Savior who she's been living in the temple waiting on. This is the God we serve. I'll make your appointments intentional. I'll make you cross paths at the right time so that you can see the right thing right when you need to see it. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, the Savior is born. <laughs> uh -huh. All you got to do is be in the right, in the right position. Just like the children that wake up in the morning and run to the tree. They're in the right spot. If you leave them in the bed sleep, they can't open nothing that belongs to them. But because they hop up and they run and get into a recipient's position before the tree, they can start tearing open everything that's theirs. Saints of God, God is, Jesus is here for, for you. He's here for you. What position are you in? What position? Where do you find yourself this morning? Huh? Huh? Are you so focused on the, the wrappings and the bows that you're missing the swaddling clothes? <sighs> that bars. Bars. Are you? Are you missing it? Or can you find yourself in the right posture? Can you assume the position? <laughs> so that you can be a recipient of all that God has for you. I need you to hear this one last thing and I'm done. 11, 12, I wasn't lying. 
the gift is always him. If you're thinking that you can become devout and just and obedient and, 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 uh, and, and devoted so that you can get the new car, you're missing it. So that you can get the new job, you're missing it. So that the finances can increase, you're, every single time the reward, the gift is more of him. That's always the gift. Hebrews 11:6 6 says that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You know what that reward is? Him. If you seek him, you will find him. Because with more of him comes everything else. It's in Christ that you have everything that you need. Not, not the need. Get to the supplier of the need. Don't be so fixed on what you're trying to fix. Be fixed on the fixer. It's always more of him. Simeon's obedience led to more of him. Anna's devotion, him. Anna could have probably been praying in the temple for a new husband. She got the Savior. We don't know, but she got the Savior. Simeon was so satisfied with the Savior that he said he could die now. I'll go now. I don't, I don't need to live for nothing else. My eyes, I've have, I have hailed the Savior of the world. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> I'm good. Whatever else you give me is fine. This is what I'm trying to help you to understand. That when you get more of Christ, you've got everything. You've got everything. Anybody ever had problems walking into the church and then got into a spirit-filled service and those problems don't even mean nothing when you leave? That's what I'm talking about. That's the exchange. That's, that's what I'm talking about. I'm telling you that that can work for you this morning. You find yourself outside of the festive mood, more of him. Seek him. Get more of him. Become obedient and devoted to him. He'll fill you afresh and Christmas will have a whole new meaning for you. Even in the midst of adversity, trial, turmoil, hurt, he can change it all. Get more of him, more in his presence. You don't need more money for Christmas. You need more of him. <laughs> you don't need more friends to celebrate, but you need the friend of all friends. Huh? Family spread all out. I can't even say I don't have nowhere to go. Yes, you do. His presence. You got it. You got everything you need right in his presence. Assume the recipients. I'm helping you. I'm not, I'm, 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 not, I'm, I'm, I'm I promise you, I'm not, not being empathetic. I'm not. I'm just trying to help you to understand that it's him that you need. Him over your situations. Him over your finances. Him over your mental destitute. Him more. Jesus, that's the gift that keeps on, keeps on giving. There may be one in the room. There may be one that just desires to, to come before his presence, to come, come at it. This is a great Sunday to be at the altar. This is a, oh my God, this is a great Sunday to just kneel down and say, I, I thank you for coming, but you coming. And he didn't just come to come. He came that he may give you life and life more abundantly. But you can't have abundant life without more of him. You need an abundance of his presence to have an abundant life. Come. Come. Come before his presence. Come before his presence with singing. <laughs> Come before his presence. Tell him thank you. Tell him I need you, God. I need more. I need more. My focus has been elsewhere. My mind has been on other things. I've been giving my attention to everything else this month, trying to satisfy the children and make sure that the, the, the basement and the tree looks right. None of that matters. More of you, Jesus. I want you. I want you. Come. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah, God. I need more of you. You got everything I need, Jesus. Here's this infant baby, lowly and meek, 
coming from a poverty-stricken family. Couldn't even get a right room to have a baby in. Yet Simeon could hold this little lowly baby and say that I've got everything I need enough to I can die today. He's got everything that you need. Everything. Just put your hands on him. <laughs> put your eyes on, gaze upon him. Whew. Do it in the spirit. Gaze upon him. Look on him this morning. Just look at him. Thank you, Jesus. Whew. Thank you. Just tell him thank you. Bigger than any other gift. He is the gift. He is the gift. Granted in your bank account situation. He's bigger. He's bigger. He's bigger. I know you miss him. I know you miss her, but he's bigger. He's bigger. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, God. Assume the position. Obedience, devotion, Holy Ghost feel, righteous, devout, just, assume the position, submission, surrender. Oh God, I thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your life, Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Cry out to him. He's worthy worthy the gift that keeps on giving Ooh, hallelujah Jesus Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. God. Philippians 2, 5 through 11 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form 
of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus Christ hey, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that with every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father thank you Lord Thank you, Jesus. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the gift that, that, that keeps on. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. You didn't have to, but you did. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Anybody got a thank you on their spirit? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your life. Thank you. Thank you that you cared so much. Woo, Jesus. <laughs> that you would be willing to die to reconcile us back to the Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Born into a poverty-like state. Walked in the denial and the despair of individuals. Battered, beaten, and bruised. Lied on, hated on. <laughs> attacked and ridiculed thank you just for us <laughs> just for you mm. 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 they wanted to kill him as a baby they was looking for Harry, Harry looking for him wanted to kill him wouldn't be so <laughs> he had a will to fulfill Thank you, just for me, just for me, just for you. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It is your reasonable service to be found in a recipient's position. Your reasonable service to create yourself a living sacrifice. It's your reasonable service to give him all of you because he gave all of himself to you. Merry Christmas. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God. Glory to your name. Thank God for Jesus. <laughs> Thank God for, for Jesus. Propitiation just for you. Just for you. God, you're worthy. Jesus, we thank you. Savior of my life, address changer. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm. The gift, the gift, none greater, none before, none after. Name above every name, Jesus. We thank you. Come on, somebody celebrate the name of the Lord in this place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let us go ahead and prepare our hearts and our minds to give glory to your name, Jesus. We thank you. 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 Let's go ahead and prepare our hearts and our minds to give so we can go ahead and get our, our Christmas day back. If you desire to give on the live stream, there will be a push pay link in the chat. If you desire to do so on Cash App, you can do so with dollar sign MT Hebron 216. Listen real quick. If you are giving via Cash App, we are going to start something new. Um, we want you to still fill out an envelope. You can put on the envelope how much you're giving via Cash App. And then just write Cash App on the top with your name and the, and the gift. Amen. We're doing this so that we can better reconcile records. Amen. It makes it easier for our trustees to reconcile the records. 
and, and to apply that which you gave for the year to anybody that likes to get tax return information at the end of the year. Amen. Amen. So, so, so if you're giving via Cash App, you can ask one of the ushers for an envelope. You just write, you know, I'm giving $20 Cash App in your name, and we can turn that into the still give your Cash App, of course, and then just bring the envelope and put it in the basket. Amen. 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 From wherever you are, come, come, and you can give to the baskets on my right and my left. one ever. Yep, yep. All hearts and minds had a, I'm sorry, everybody have an opportunity to give. Nobody overlooked. Amen. Let us pray if all hearts and minds are clear. God, we thank you. We thank you for the gift. We thank you for the giver. We thank you for the truth that I've always spoken. That the best place for our finances to be is in the hands of the one who supplied. Lord God, let everything that was brought into your storehouse be used for the edification of your kingdom. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we pray and we thank you. All of God's children said amen. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Man, I had a good time. I don't know about you. Grateful, grateful again to each and every one of you who pressed your way through the elements and through such a, such a again, a monumentous yearly time, oh God, uh, uh, as, as Christmas to come to church. You know, uh, my brother Rick, Rick Brown said that, you know, every seven years you get this Christmas on a Sunday. But you know, though I've been a member of Mount Hebron for 12 years now, I, I, don't, I don't know why I don't remember Christmas on a Sunday. I just don't, <laughs> I just can't remember coming to church on Christmas, man. I know I have, but I just can't remember but but I'm grateful for this one I really do I, I, I really am I'm grateful for this one I'm grateful for the word that went forth I pray that you are touched by it that it was this it did something to you I, I really do find yourself find yourself in that recipient's position get that just like that just like the child who who runs to the tree and kneels down in anticipation of what belongs to them you can do the same thing in the spirit realm be obedient be devoted unto God Regardless of what your situation says, be obedient and be devoted unto him. And there's gifts for you. <laughs> more importantly, there's a gift for you. And that's more of him. Because in him is everything that you need. Amen. Amen. If all hearts and minds are clear, we can stand to be dismissed. 1132. I went over two minutes. I lied. 1132. Enjoy your Christmas, saints. Enjoy your Christmas, Mount Hebron. Do it with Christ first. Amen. I pray that you get everything you desire, but more importantly, I pray you get more of him. More of him. It trumps anything that could be bought at any store. 
more of him is all you need. Amen. Children, enjoy your Christmas. I pray that you get everything that you desire. Amen. All of the Jordans and the video games and everything else that you desire. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for this beautiful day, this amazing occasion, the day that we recognize you being born. We thank you, Father, for sending your son, giving us the best of what you have and all of who you are, and sending your son here to die a criminal's death for us. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you that our lives are secure because you sent your son. Thank you for the gift that keeps on giving. Now, God, let it be our reasonable service to be devoted, to be obedient, to be submitted to the Holy Spirit, that we may find ourselves at the right place <laughs> at the right time, that we may handle the Savior appropriately, much like Simeon and Anna did. God, we thank you. We love you. Be with us this day. Lord God, let Christmas for us here in the natural be everything that you desire for it to be for us. It's in the mighty and the master's name of Jesus. I pray and I thank you. And all of God's children said amen. Merry Christmas. I love y'all. Have a great rest of your Christmas day.